What's up, everybody? Richard back this week for another episode of the Warped Report. And hey, man, as always, there's some stuff to stuff the news week with. We got some rock and roll Hall of Fame stuff. We got artists pulling their music off of Spotify. We got uh, festival announcements. We have music that came out on Friday that I want to talk about. So let's just not waste any time. So let's just dive on in. Rage Against the Machine and Judas Priest are among the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame 2022 nominees. Of course, there are plenty more than that, but those are the two notable ones. You know, you have other artists like uh, like Lionel Richie, Dolly Parton, Eminem, Duran Duran. But Judas Priest, Rage Against the Machine, I think that would be really cool to see a band like Rage Against the Machine come in. Um, but right, right now, today through April 29th, you, a fan, can provide your input by voting via vote.rockhall.com uh, or at the Organizations Museum in Cleveland, Ohio. So that's something that, you know, hey, we complain all the time about it. Why don't, why don't they let none of these bands into nothing? Well, now's your chance to do so. Go ahead and vote. But next, I wanted to talk about this band called Failure. Uh, they're pulling their music from Spotify over COVID misinformation and poor payouts. Now, this is a rock band uh, based out of Los Angeles, California. I've never heard of them personally, but they have plans to remove their music from streaming services, uh, from the streaming service Spotify, rather. And, uh, you know, they've they've often, I guess, according to this Lamgord article, they've talked about the low artist payouts and whatnot. And they released a lengthy statement here, um, you know, pretty much just talking about how, you know, they, they I, I, I think a lot of it has to do with probably the Joe Rogan podcast. I, you know, they don't, I don't, it doesn't look like they address that here, you know, very clearly, but I mean, that's what a lot of it is. You know, this comes right after Neil Young, I uh, also decided to pull his off of due to that. But then, you know, if you go to, uh, if you go to Spotify, their page is still there. So uh, they're still here and, but they do have a banner that says that they are going to be parting ways. Um, when I don't know, but I mean, listen, man. I, I hey, if you wanna, if you wanna do it, go for it. Uh, it is what it is. I personally, if you want to take a stand like that, that's your own personal prerogative. I, but in my opinion, when it comes to the poor payouts thing, I've often said it all the time. It, 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 it it's. I just don't understand that. Like, I, I really just don't. I think, uh, you know, with the streaming revenue, it depends. It depends, right? Like, failure, I'm sure, is signed to a label. And it all depends on what their contract is like. You know, does the label get the majority of their streaming revenue? Probably. Did they sign the contract? Yep. And then, again, from there, you know, if you're if you're an independent artist, you can make money with streaming if you do it, you know, uh, in a certain way. And then from there, what I really think, though, is that the streaming revenue is just kind of like an added bonus. And Spotify is a really great vehicle to promote your music, to help you sell merch, help you sell tickets and whatnot. So that part I've always kind of been like, I just don't understand that. But hey, if, if, if in your opinion there's you know COVID misinformation and whatnot, that's, again, that's the band's prerogative. You know, they, they, can, they can do what they want. We're not going to get into that here because we're just, we're just talking about music. Okay. But I did want to talk about this story because I wanted to touch on the poor payouts aspect of it. But speaking of a band that probably doesn't get poor payouts, you know what I mean? It's Slipknot. Okay. They have finished recording their new album and they're expected to release it in the spring. As it says here in this Lamb Goat article, frontman Corey Taylor has revealed that Slipknot are currently finishing up work on their next album. A title has been chosen. Mixing is currently underway, and Taylor estimates that the new outing will arrive around May. Um, so, yeah, that's exciting. You know, hey, we're this new Slipknot. You know, I'm going to be checking that out, dude. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Slipknot are legends. You got to check them out anytime Slipknot comes out with anything. So when they drop a song... I will be reacting to it without a doubt, as will I be reacting to any new Fit for a King material. They've also announced that they've completed their album as well. Uh, after a month or so, after heading to Los Angeles, California, uh, this they have announced that they have finished it. And this one, uh, this they announced here too that it also was with Drew Folk again, who worked with them on their last record, um, who's also worked with bands like Motionless, uh, uh, Motionless and White here, Ice Nine Kills, but I know that he's also worked with Amur in the past. So, and, uh, you know, uh, and, and according to Ryan Kirby on Twitter, I don't have those tweets pulled up right now, but he did talk about how the process was easy. So that's great. And about how a lot of it's getting heavy again. So that's really, really exciting to hear. You know, I know a lot of people weren't that stoked on the path, uh, but I think that they're, you know, I think, 
I think that fit for a king. They're they're very they have their ear to the ground. You know, they really pay attention to that stuff, and I think that they will kind of alter course a little bit. I'm sure you still have you know songs that would be on the path, but you're gonna still get that heavy stuff like we heard from Dark Skies in the past for sure. Another band that has finished up their album is Bleeding Through. Um, I I this is exciting. You know, Bleeding Through has been around for a while, um, and. Uh, you know, it says right here, in the fall of 2020, they announced that they had uh, commenced pre-production to their follow-up to their 2018 album, Love Will Kill All. And now they have announced, uh, looks like, uh, look at that. Hey, man, anytime you see that board written with stuff, I love. I always love the names, like the pre-pro names and whatnot. Late 90s Rage, Blind as F, Bum Builder, Circle Pit, Fat Kid. I mean, look at that right there. Those sound like bangers to me, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, it says like a late uh, 2022 release of the album seems likely. So that is exciting. Ble- uh, Bleeding Through has been around for a while. So that's always, it's really cool to see a band like that still going. Uh, now this was interesting. Okay, let's just, let's just, uh, let's just take a step back here and digest this. Okay. So Alyssa White Glues, I will not tell you pronounce her name, Glues or Glues, you know, from Arch Enemy. Randy Blythe from, uh, you know, Lamb of God. And Dallas Taylor, who's in, you know, Maylene and the Sons of Disaster, used to be in Under Oath a long time ago. And more are set to star in a new vampire movie called Virginia Bitches. Okay, I listen, hey, I'm just, I don't, I, hey, I didn't come up with the name, okay? Uh, it's going to be very interesting because, yeah, they mentioned down here they got Alyssa, Dallas, uh, Taylor, uh, Doyle, Wolfgang, Von Frankenstein from the Misfits, Corey Taylor. Wow, Corey Taylor's going to be in it. Uh, Heidi Shepard, Bill Mosley, who if you if you pay attention to any of the Ice Nine Kills videos that were going on with the newest record, it's the the guy who is the police chief. That's Bill Mosley. Vincent Vargas, Devaney Pin, Haley Leary, Derek Russo, Scott Lewis of Carnifex, LeJean Witherspoon of Seven Dust, Lucas Mann of Rings of Saturn, and Christian Machado of El Nino. Um... Yeah, th- this is crazy. So it also says here the production team has launched an Indiegogo to fund the feature uh, with an initial flexible goal of $350,000. An introduction video can be viewed here. Um, yeah, so there's a video there if you wanted to check that out. But yeah, three hundred fifty grand. I mean, listen, I, 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 hope that it, I hope that it happens, you know. I think that this is very interesting. I would watch it, you know, with a th- if, if assuming... Yeah, I'm going to assume that there's probably going to be more than just a $350,000 budget. That's very low budget. Um, you know, it'll probably be kind of, you know, kind of silly, kind of cringy a little bit. But, hey, it's really cool to see It's really cool to see some of Metal's finest in a movie. I mean, nonetheless, whether it's uh, bad or not. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a big movie guy, okay? So I'm a little bit critical. But, you know, hey, listen, I'm willing to give it a chance. All That Remains will be rejoined by their former bassist, Matt Days. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. He was an original member of the band. Uh, he was in there from 2003 till 2005. Uh, but then he came back for Aaron Patrick, who, uh, you know, went to go join uh, Destroy. What is it? Destroy, Rebuild, Until God Shows, you know, drugs. So, yeah, uh, Matt Dees, or Days, is back in the band. Incarceration Music and Tattoo Festival 2022, 2022 has been announced. Um, it will be taking place July 15th to the 17th at the Ohio State Reformatory in Mansfield, Ohio. Um, but yeah, the, 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 I saw this. I know that there was one band that has not been announced yet, but some bands that you know immediately stick out, Corn, Papa Roach, Three Days Grace, I Prevail, Sleeping With Sirens, Code Orange, uh, Dead, Born of Osiris. Uh, who else we got down here? Breaking Benjamin, Evanescence, Falling in Reverse, Avatar, Spirit Box, Volumes. Uh, if I Die First, Lamb of God, Seether, Nothing More, Sick Puppies. Uh, Sick Puppies, wow, that's a band that I have not heard in a while. Dreamwalker, uh, Veil of Maya. So, yeah, a bunch of really cool bands there at Incarceration. Yeah, so 2022 Big Takeover has been announced. Okay, now this will be taking place on May 20th and May 21st at three different venues in Richmond. Uh, you know, a bunch of different bands here. It looks like we got some uh, some hardcore bands here. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's any bands that really that I can see that you know none of these bands really stick out to me. But I definitely wanted to bring this up just in case there are some fans out there. And I've heard of Restraining Order. Um, I've heard of C4, which is that's a that's an insanely cool name. I think that's really really cool. 
Uh, but yeah, so there you go. Big Takeover Fest has been announced. Now let's talk about a couple tracks real quick uh, before we wrap it up here. Devil Wears Prada, Watchtower. I thought this was a really cool track. I gave it an 8.5 on my review. Got that really old school feel to it. Cool breakdown. This is probably one of my favorite Devil Wears Prada songs, as I'm not really the biggest Devil Wears Prada fan, but I did enjoy this one. Kublai Khan uh, announced their new EP, and they also premiered the song Swan Song featuring Scott Vogel of Terror. So, yeah, they're going to be putting out an EP on April 1st, the lowest form of animal through Rise Records. And Swan Song, let me tell you, man, you want to talk about real music. Uh, man, that was... Um that was some that was some tough listen, some tough lyrics, very cool subject matter just in terms of like, you know, just keeping it real. Matt Honeycutt is a legend, absolutely phenomenal vocalist. Um, as right now it's on my playlist, the Core 100, and it's actually the top song because I absolutely loved it. 10 out of 10 for me. Monuments, they released their new track, uh, Cardinal Red which I believe this one featured uh, Mick Gordon as well. Or I know that he either mixed the album. He was involved in some way, shape, or form with the album. Uh, but, yeah, this is going to be coming off their album uh, In Status, which will be coming out April 15th. I love I love this song. I thought this was really cool. I, I, you know, when you, whenever you have a vocalist like Andy, it really opens you up to do a lot of really cool things because of how talented the guy is. Next up, we have Hollow Front and their track Comatose. I enjoyed this one as well, man. I thought this was very Architects-like, very much reminded me of them. And I actually got to speak to uh, Lee Albrecht, uh, you know, the guy who you know was responsible for producing Hollow Front and is now a form formal member of the band. And he said that you know when he was writing this, when he was listening to a lot of Architects, so that was really cool to hear. It's a great song, big chorus. If you want that like arena sound, you got to listen to this. And finally, we have Low. They did a collaboration with Sleep Token on the track "Is It Really You." Uh, you know, very, uh, very heart wrenching rendition here. Um, not something that I will listen to on a daily basis, but man, if these bands aren't talented, um, it's crazy. Especially Sleep Token. You know, Vessel has a phenomenal voice, and I highly recommend checking that song out. But there you guys have it. That does it for this week's episode of The Warped Report. It went a little bit longer. I hope that's okay with y'all. A couple minutes, you know. Hey, but we got some stuff to talk about, some stuff that I thought was important. But anyways, guys, till next week, same bad Richard, same out-of-line YouTube channel. This is The Warped Report. I'll see you next week. Peace.